Uh, sociology as a discipline emerged amidst the massive social, political, and economic changes in Western Europe during the late 18th and early 19th centuries. Science and technology ushered in the machines and technology that propelled the Industrial Revolution, thereby transforming Western economic systems from agrarian or agricultural bases to the urban industrial base and market economies. Peasants, previously serfs or tenant farmers on estates, migrated in massive numbers to the major urban centers to work in factories, setting in motion the problems associated with the division of labor, specialization, and cultural diversity. Ties to family, friends, and familiar symbols and rituals were torn asunder by the social changes, not always, but often. Beginning with the French Revolution of 1789 in France, traditional forms of authority, meaning monarchs, were overthrown or undermined. In many countries, democracies with elected officers and parliaments replaced these kings and monarchs. Slowly, and still moving slowly, the public e e education requisite to ensuring the full participation of citizens in democratic forms of government emerged. The early classical European sociologists sought to replace religious explanations of social phenomena with scientific ones to explain the large-scale changes as, in quotes, social facts. However, for the most part, these early theories were flawed by two factors. One, the implicit assumption that social reality and all of the changes could be captured by logical deductions within a singular unified field. And two, the anthropomorphizing of concepts such as society or organizations. In other words, one, big ideas were often not connected through empirical observations that bubbled up to produce hypothetical connections across large numbers of cases connections that could be tested with the systematic collection of data, and two, society as a concept cannot really be a cause. Social conditions or societal conditions mediated by interactions among individuals who act within institutions in specific organizational or group settings with purpose can present opportunities or impose constraints. However, to see group settings, to see these actions, we need a micros microscope through which to view the details of networks and human interactions, the shared understandings that guide purposeful action. Despite the now known flaws in classical sociological theory, social theory courses often continue to present the substance of socio sociological theory through the lens of classical theorists such as Durkheim, Marx, and Weber, often as part of a history of the ideas of great men. Typically, as is sometimes the case with the Dylan text, an effort is made to frame contemporary issues within the perspective of one of these theorists. And indeed, the Founding Fathers made astounding contributions with the introduction of the idea of science as plausibly applied to societal phenomena, even if they often missed essential ideas that distinguish human sciences from natural sciences. Recently, a new generation of sociologists began to view the disjunction 
between what is taught in theory and what contemporary sociologists actually do as problematic. Moreover, many of us are deeply troubled that students often graduate with a degree in sociology, yet do not have the skills they need to enter the workforce or to analyze issues required for active citizenship. Thus, the decisions about content for this course fall in line with a broader trend of teaching sociological theory as we teach uh, research methods, social research methods. Theory or theorizing requires a set of skills that can be demonstrated or learned in steps starting with the basics. And so down this new path of social inquiry or sociological theorizing, we will travel together starting at the traditional entrance, but then changing our orientation and navigational headings toward the goal of learning how to evaluate and create theories that can be corroborated or falsified with data, that is, how to theorize. In unit number two, or the folder for unit number two, you will find two folders, week three, the Art of Social Theory, and week four, Introduction to Sociological Theory. In the week three folder, you will find three short podcasts, about 10 minutes each. One, a podcast on social inquiry, a podcast on grounded theory, and three, a podcast on sociological theorizing. You will also find short quotes from larger articles on abduction, from Immanuel Kant, and on uh, uh, the ideas in Swedberg, such as guessing, again, focusing on abduction. There are also two excerpts, from one from Swedberg and one from Hoang, about 30 pages total of reading. One of the things I like best about Hoang's book, from which the excerpt is taken, is that she connects every societal level as a seamless thread, global, societal, organizational, and micro-interactionist. Later in the semester, we will read an article that pulls together her observations and theorizing, actually sociological theorizing at its very best. There is also a new discussion forum in the week three folder that connects to week four. In week four, we will read more conventional approaches to classical sociological theories within their respective socio-historical context. The folder contains reading assignments, podcasts, and links to readings about the Industrial Revolution, the Enlightenment, the emergence of sociology, and empirical snapshots of specific organizations in the 19th century. Thanks. Great. Have a good week.